Equities, fixed income currencies, commodities, and derivatives. Good afternoon, and welcome to Market Today. I'm, my name is George Bodo, co-hosting with Mbide Mwema. Uh, looking ahead, we are talking the art of policy making. We've just seen that uh, the Bank of England has left its key policy instrument unchanged, following in the footstep of uh, the US Federal Reserve, which yesterday left its key policy instrument, which is the F Fed fund rate unchanged. We also be looking at the markets, and talking about the markets, uh, we've seen a couple of moves. Uh, Safaricom still the top top movers, just trading share of eight million shares so far. It's just about twelve minutes to market close, and don't expect much upside from that. Um, on the top losers, something very interesting. You notice the National Bank is down almost eight percent. It's very interesting given that, well, both shareholders have approved the transaction between KCB and NBK. Be there, what do you make of that? Any views on that 8% drop? No, nothing I think much. the market is just saying, so you it's know a what? business as usual in the market. It's just saying there's, there's nothing here, and uh, we want, they're probably adjusting the price to reflect their sentiments. Uh, Fahari, Stanley, uh, sorry, Stanley Fahari income rate, um, one of the, one of the making the top, the list of top winners so far, just about 11 minutes market close, up 3.21% 3, 3 at, at 9 shillings. Nine shillings. Is it a premium a discount to the book value? Uh, Three percent is neither here nor there. Yeah. But we've been seeing local um, retail investors picking up on the stock. At about nine shillings, it's trading about 30, 40 percent discount to and its book, book value. value. It has some interesting assets. The only issue is the yields on their asset portfolio are coming down. Yeah. They're at about six to eight yeah. percent. But their advice to the customers or to the clients and shareholders are they want to move it all the way from six to eight to 12 to 14 percent question is how do you unearth that value if you're not able to demonstrate how you can unearth that value then this discount at nine shillings is probably justified the, the, be the real estate arithmetics is somehow very complicated it depends where you're sitting <laughs> yeah i mean look I, I said yesterday real estate rentals going down prices going up it's a big mismatch yes is, is it a good asset class to hold right now Read. It depends on what you're holding. Yeah. If we come back to Stanlib, Stanlib, Stanlib is holding commercial property. Yeah. But the element, when you're looking at the commercial property space now, which is already overcrowded, yeah. the opportunities that are emerging are in the warehousing space, something that maybe they don't have in their portfolio. If they're able to get into that space, then maybe they can be able to afford themselves higher yields. But then their current portfolio may not be able to go up in terms of yields. So you are absolutely right. Overcrowded space, yields are coming down. Let's see what they can be able to pull out of the hat. That's, that's a fair enough. Um, the major indices still down, still red. NSC 20 share index is so far 10 minutes to market close. It's down 42 bips. Nothing happening in the market. Since Monday, the market has been red. It's red, but today is even worse. You know, yesterday we traded about 20 million shares in Safari. Come today, it's only 7 million. Then the next... A bit of a light volume oh, today. Oh, there's, there's nothing happening. I can tell you, I can promise you traders are twiddling thumbs as we are. But what are you hearing? What's going on in the market? Why is this all red since Monday? We've been talking red, red, red. I bet I'm wearing a red tie. And I'm in a red dress. Maybe it's, it's, it's all morning. red everywhere. <laughs> it's all it's red bleeding. everywhere. It's bleeding. Is there, is it, is it, do you think, do you see an, an end to this in the next coming I days? I don't know. You, you have to look out for when the decision on the finance bill comes out because all the red is actually an indicator of the foreign investors selling out. So it's been sell Safaricom. When your foreign investors begin to sell Safaricom and they've been slightly more aggressive this week, then you need to be actually looking out to see what else they'll be selling. And okay. the banks as well. Okay. Um, Talking about monetary policy. Your favorite topic, George. <laughs> the US Fed. Yes, George. The Federal Open Markets Committee yesterday decided to leave to hold its key policy instrument. What does this what does this mean for global liquidity conditions? You think now Kenya can sell a, a Euro bond at five percent? Well, what stood out in that statement was the fact that the chairman, Jeremy Powell, actually changed stance. He's always been an advocate for a hawkish stance when yeah. it comes to monetary yeah. policy. Yeah. Let's raise the rates. But then for a little while now, Mr. Donald Trump actually got a whole panel of lawyers to say, to give him options on how he can get rid of the chairman legally. <laughs> that sent a very well, strong message. I was message. watching the, the briefing yesterday myself, his press briefing, the post um, uh, monetary policy committee meeting briefing. Yes. And he said that the law is very clear. He wants to see out his four years. <laughs> Sorry, Trump. This guy is sticking around. I don't think Trump was actually going to push him out. He just was sending a message. 
Because yeah. now all of a sudden, if you think about it, his sentiment and the stance from the, the entire committee has moved from hawkish to dovish. Yeah. It was expected, but it looks like the dovish stance in terms of cutting back on the rates is going to start much sooner as soon as July. And then on one end, the president is out there and he has instigated a trade war. Yeah. It looks like a currency war is actually imminent. And he's saying that we have to find a way to um, not have a very strong dollar because a strong dollar is making their exports uncompetitive globally. Yeah. So then he wants a way to, to create a space where other people are forced either to devalue or to depreciate their own currencies in favor of the US dollar so that he can enhance the competitiveness. I think it's it's a very you raise a very broad point. I think the art of monetary policy making today is very interesting. I mean, you have the U.S. Federal Reserve with this key Fed funds rate target, the, and if you look at the press release yesterday, the, um, uh, the key change was in the wording. You know, they're saying they remove the word patient. They're no longer patient with the, st the weakness in the in the, in the uh, output. They they seem they point the fact that they want to cut rates. I think they fell short of cutting rates yesterday. And it's all in the wording. It's all in what they say, which yes. is a very interesting aspect of policy making. Okay. Do you see, if you read the monetary policy of the central banks, MPC press release, do you see any wording? Do you like the wording? Can Actually, you tell in the future? Yes, I, I read a lot. Well, I mean, not I read a lot, like, but you can read through what any monetary policy statement is saying. I don't want to imagine that making that decision is easy. Actually, when I saw this decision yesterday by um, the Fed, and I looked at where we are at and I imagined, what if George, you're either the cabinet secretary or you're Dr. Jaguna or you're the president and you're responsible, you're responsible for the economic outlook of this country. Yeah. But there's so many factors that are working against you and you have absolutely no control. What do you do? So I asked myself, what would I do? I yeah. really didn't have an answer. I tell you what, the Central Bank's Monetary Policy Committee, every month they monitor 200, over 200. They do. Economic indicators. Which means they're actually, and if that's what they do, George, anything that they put through, there's something that, reading between the lines, anytime yeah. I read the policy statements from our central bank, it always gives me an indication of, yes, they may not have changed the CBR rate because their hands are, because they're not able to at that particular point, um, maybe because of what's happening with the rate caps and they're unable to effectively communicate to the market what needs to happen. But anytime I read it, I'm able to get a sense on their outlook on, on inflation, outlook on currency and the outlook on economy and whether there are any stress factors that they're noticing. And over and above that, they also put out a market survey where they actually go and interview the CEOs and find out what yeah. is your outlook over the next six yeah. months. I don't know, what do you think about it? What decision would you make if, if today you are the person who's heading the monetary policy in Nairobi and you have seen what's happening in the US, you have seen what's happening in England, and you're here caught up in a space where you do not know what direction the finance bill will do. What do you do at night? Before I answer that, I want to tell you that I have a problem with monetary policy making in Kenya today. Okay. One is that um, the policy making, the signalization. You read that the press release, you don't get an, you can't tell you what they're going to do in the next three months. The signalization is so poor. The second issue is that I think that communication needs to be enhanced. Um, for instance, if you look at the F F F F FOMC releases, they capture the full extent. They do a press release of each transcript of what each member said, mm -hmm. why they dissented or why they agreed with the governors. Today, if you look at the, an NPC press release in Kenya, it's a one-pager. Mm. I could tell you how it's going to look in the next NPC meeting. But what I do, do you have want a problem. to know? I, do, I, I, I want to know, be there, there are about seven members of the NPC. Yes. How did they vote? Okay. If someone dissented, why did they dissent? It's very important. I need to know how they're thinking and how they arrive at those days. Because remember, NPC policy making, to a large extent, is a vote. Yes. I choose, to, I, I support this, I support hold, I support cut, I support a dovish stance, I support a hawkish stance. Okay, I think that only applies in the yes, US. Yes, yeah. So there's the art of policy uh, signalization in Kenya. I think uh, there needs to be some significant enhancement in terms of policy communication. I think, I George, you, wa you want access to the over 200 data sets that I don't have the capacity that, to analyze that feed. economic you, you look like you're angry for basis. you know you're angry for this information yes. and that's what you want to be able to get I mean I hear you but then again George US us here yeah I, th I can't say whether the communication we get is sufficient or insufficient, but maybe another way of looking at it is do you feel that the members of this monetary policy committee are well equipped 
to make the decisions, whether it's in the form of the data that they receive and the knowledge and industry experience that they have. So are they making the best decisions? Maybe that's also another way because we can keep sitting here and saying we don't get enough communication or we don't know what's happening. But over and above that, the question that we need to be asking is, in the sports that they're, they're in, with the challenges that they're facing, the ones that maybe we are able to see, and I think they're even bigger challenges that we are not privy to, yeah. are they making the best decisions with what they have? Based on the decisions that they are making, then what do we need to be looking out for as an investor on the NSC, whether I am local or foreign? Because at times you can get caught up on, I want to know what member number seven said at 5.45, um, just before they close the NSC. And why did they meeting, vote like that? And why they, did they vote like that? They need to justify why they voted like that. It's sort of enhancing communication around monetary policy. It's called the art of policy making. Behavior. The art of policy making. Yes. Okay. The, at, another problem I have with the policy communicator today is the fact that uh, the pol monetary policy making today seems to be held hostage. And this is something I've always said all the time. Why do you say it's held hostage? Yeah, because they don't seem to move past government's death position. They seem to be caught up in all this fiscal aggression. Um, for instance, today, um, the government, sorry, the monetary policy cannot, the committee cannot think of hiking, signaling, it's not even about the quantum of hiking, signaling a tightening stance. Because that will, what will, the signal that will give the market is that, well, we are going up. The market will start bidding up. Mm -hmm. And that will jeopardize government's debt sustainability because, as you know, uh, domestic foreign debt split is 50-50. But on the local side, the government, uh, sorry, Treasury is facing significant refinancing risks as well as maturity risk. And I hope that in the next fiscal year, the debt issues the calendar needs to factor in those two key risks. And I need to see more issues in the long term, the longer end of the curve. Do you, did you like the issues calendar? This, this, have you had time to look at it? No, I haven't actually. Okay. I haven't so they've been issuing to... more on the medium, on the long, on the short ends. Very few long end issues. And I remember one day I wrote an article and saying, hey, as a country, you're facing significant maturity risk. Can we move to the long end of the curve? What do you mean by significant maturity risk? So if you look at, for instance, 10 years ago, mm -hmm. the, de the, um, the years to maturity of outstanding domestic debt portfolio mm -hmm. was just about close to 10 years. That has since moved about four years on a, over a 10-year period. Now that means that in, in four years' time, you have a significant portion of debt to redeem. And that's not good for debt sustainability. You want a situation where most of your redemptions fall due over maturity a long time. Okay. Yeah. Right. Hold on to that. I think I want to get your thought on that as All you right. come back. Up next is uh, Market Bell. Let's ring the bell. Market's closing. <laughs>